So when we talk about musical form, we're really talking about the sequence of sections within a song. In other words, it's just the order of these similar and contrasting sections. And, you know, the main theme and when the main theme returns. This is what gives the song its form, its shape. Now, a typical pop, rock, modern worship song might have, uh, it might have a form like this. It might start with the intro and then verse 1 and chorus 1. Uh, then there might be a re-intro there, which is kind of like a restatement of the intro. Uh, then you'd go into verse 2 and chorus 2. Maybe chorus 2 is a double, perhaps. And if there's a bridge in the song, the bridge would probably happen right there after chorus 2. Um, a lot of times after the bridge, maybe you're going to go to chorus 3. Maybe there's a modulation. It might happen there. Uh, chorus 3 could be a breakdown, which is a technique where you, uh, you know, if you've kind of built the song up and you've got all the instruments playing, um, maybe at the end of the bridge you break down, meaning you pull some of the instruments out, maybe go down to just voice and percussion or just voice and acoustic guitar. And then maybe a fourth course where you bring the band back in and uh, you might cap off the song with an outro. When you say an outro, generally that means the same material as the intro but used as an ending. So, and of course a million different variations of that, but uh, that's an idea of what a typical pop song form might look like. Now. Uh, it's important to understand that form exists at several different levels. You know, I always love the, uh, the graphics where you, you look at an atom and you see a nucleus with the electrons spinning around and then they sort of zoom out and you look at the solar system with the sun and the planets spinning around just like the electrons, you know, the micro and the macro level. Well, it's kind of like what musical form is. Uh, uh, and this is really interesting. Well, well, let me show you what I mean. Like, for instance, inside of one measure, there's four beats. And you put four of those measures together, and those four measures make a phrase. And you put four of those phrases together, and those four phrases make a verse, for instance. You see what I'm saying? So you've got form at the micro level. You've also got form at the macro level. And it's really interesting. If you look at, uh, in fact, there's a chart in the book. If you look at a typical CCLI chart, a chart of the top 25 songs that the church is singing in any given month, uh, it's amazing how many of those songs are built around uh, the simple number four. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about next, the fantastic four. You know, most people think of the fantastic four as these uh, comic book superheroes, right? But to me, the fantastic four is something completely different. Uh, to me, the fantastic four is this I mean, literally the backbone of 95% of the music that we play. If you think about it, uh, we've got measures with four beats per measure, and we've got phrases that are made up of four bars, and we've got song sections like a verse and a chorus that are made up of four phrases. And uh, everything about music, even for people that don't know music, uh, they sense this, uh, these grid lines of four that really govern all the music. Uh, you know, if you look at all these CCLI songs, it's amazing how many of them. You can look in the book and see, take uh, Shout to the Lord, for instance. It's exactly that. It's uh, four beats per bar, four bars per phrase, four phrases per section. In other words, four in each verse, four in each chorus. Um, same way for Open the Eyes of My Heart by Paul Balash. Same thing. Four beats per bar, four bars per phrase, four phrases in the verse, four phrases in the chorus. So there's like a symmetry that uh, even non-musical people sense that causes music to line up like that. Uh, and, and to me, it's, uh, I think of it a little bit like, uh, you know, like Hansel and Gretel leaving a breadcrumb trail to find out where they are. Because when I'm playing music, I can just kind of feel, I can hear these groups of four happening all the time. And it's almost like uh, by the way I play, like for instance, I always know that if there's going to be a tom fill at a phrase, it's for sure going to be at the end of bar four of every phrase, because that tom fill leads you into the next phrase. Um, if there's going to be uh, a half cadence, when we talk about cadences, that always happens at the midway point of a section like that. So uh, you'll start to get a feel for how this fantastic four really glues music together. There is one more song form that I want to tell you about, and that's the 12 bar blues. Now, it's called the 12 bar blues, but uh, you do hear this progression in all kinds of music, all kinds of styles like um, rock and pop and, uh, 
um, swing music even. For instance, uh, In the Mood by Glenn Miller is a 12-bar blues. You hear it in jazz. Uh, the music of the Beatles, Money by the Beatles is a 12-bar blues. Hound Dog by Elvis is a 12-bar blues. Um, Crossroads, Eric Clapton and Cream is a 12-bar blues. Uh, the progression itself is really simple. In fact, it only uses the three primary triads. Remember we talked about those earlier, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Uh, you can look in your book and you see a really simple 12-bar blues laid out there in the key of C. Now over time, of course, uh, different arrangers and composers, different artists have elaborated on the 12-bar blues. B.B. Uh, King, of course, the great blues master, uh, The Thrill is Gone, you probably know his song. That's actually a good example of the 12-bar blues in a minor key. We're going to talk about minor keys in a bit. But um, it's, uh, it's just one of those song forms that you need to know. In fact, if you look in the book also, there's, uh, there's a great uh, elaboration of the 12-bar blues that was done by Count Basie uh, years ago. So uh, you definitely want to check that out. Uh, jump into your workbook and you'll find all kind of details about the 12-bar blues and lots of other modern worship song forms as well.